Hey everybody, so I am back with another painting video, but um, this time I am going to show you the photos that I am working with. As um, the video plays, I am also gonna try to kind of walk you through what I am doing while I'm painting, okay? So first, um, the photos that I am working with, all right, so first I printed out this um, photo, like I said, in black and white. I normally print my photos in black and white. Once I take it with my camera phone, I print it with just a regular home printer and I print it in black and white. One, it says on the color ink. And then two, it just helps me um, look at some of those details a little bit more. So that way my mind doesn't automatically shift to I'm only painting this um subject one color and we know that we don't paint uh I, we know that the subject is not all just one color throughout the picture okay so um what i did was um here i have this is the green one this is the red one and this is the yellow one just so just so i have that reminder okay and then i also have um i drew where the lightest portions of this of the light is going to hit this yellow pepper okay and so now um i did go back i printed this in color because if you notice that on this um picture the yellow is so bright i wasn't sure if i was going to be able to pick up all of the different tones that are in that yellow pepper so that's one of the reasons why i went ahead and printed the um the picture in color so i suggest you do the same thing if you're not solely convinced on looking at a photo in black and white please go ahead and print it in color and use whatever um is best for you okay so just the minute i'm going to go change i suggest you do the same thing if you would like to paint along with me because now this time i'm going to try to walk you through what i'm doing all right, so I am starting out with the yellow pepper. And the only reason why I did not start with the green pepper is because it's hiding slightly behind the yellow pepper and the red pepper. Now, I could have easily started with the uh, red pepper, but I chose to start drawing uh, the yellow pepper first. Now, as you see, I'm um, going in and making my drawings using this titanium white and uh, i'm just making an outline of what that pepper should look like I'm, i know it's not perfect it will develop uh, as as i continue painting and then the next thing i'm starting with is the red pepper that is on the right of the yellow pepper and once again i'm just going in kind of sketching the overall shape of this red pepper now, what I would suggest is that uh, if you would like to draw or paint peppers, go ahead, set up some peppers, take a photo, and make sure that you position them and take a photo in the best, uh, capturing the best viewpoint in order for you to paint or make your sketch, because that's going to determine a whole lot. If you put them in a position where it's very hard for you to now uh, kind of sketch that onto your painting, you may have um, some difficulties along the way in just developing your painting. All right, so now I'm going in and where the green pepper is slightly hiding behind the red pepper and the yellow pepper, I'm going in and kind of sketching out the overall shape of my green pepper. Now, as you will see, I'm going back to the yellow pepper, kind of defining things and where I think things should be. And that's basically all painting is, is um, one, you're going to start with the general shape of your subject, if that's what you choose to paint first. And then you're going to continue to develop it along the way. I wouldn't get too focused on getting your subject exactly right unless you're doing something um, like people or I'm not really sure about a landscape. I haven't done a landscape in so long, um, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't obsess over getting the getting the the shape of these peppers down first before you start drawing um painting on your background and the table um that your 
your subject is sitting on because you can use the paint as you paint those different um, sections. You can use that to define your peppers. OK, so I've already um, painted the background. If um, if you see I'm making the left side of the background, it is a little bit lighter than the right side. And now I'm painting the surface of the peppers of what the peppers are sitting on. And what I used for that was it's like it's called a portrait pink, which are uh, yeah, portrait pink, which is like a very light pink It's almost like a nude It's close to a nude color. But that is what I'm using to um, paint this surface that the um, peppers are sitting on. And as you remember, I am not focused on getting everything down exact as long as, you know, I, I just tell this story of, you know, I'm painting a, a picture of bell peppers i'm not really concerned about what was in the the original photo what was in that background and what they were actually sitting on i'm not really concerned about that i just want to paint my peppers and that is something that you can also do you don't have to necessarily draw everything that you see in your photo you can you can add things you can eliminate things and that's the beauty of painting all right, so now I am going in with this very, very dark color, which is a combination of a yellow and black. And I kind of traced over that titanium white because that's kind of where my shadows are going to be on my pepper, on my yellow pepper. And now I'm going in with the green to kind of define the areas of, of where that stem is in the middle. And um, one of the reasons why I told you all to take your own pictures is because um, if you decide to use your paintings and submit them in either uh, competitions or exhibitions, you want to make sure that um, they're original. And if you are using um, someone else's work as a study and then you like the way that it turns out, then you're kind of limited because you can't use that painting as original artwork. And that is one thing that they require if you submit those into um, competitions. They're going to require original artwork, uh, among other things. But now what you will see is that I'm going in kind of um, kind of smoothing out those lines. Right. And. Later on, that's going to help kind of develop where the shadow is and then where the actual color of the pepper comes in. All right, so now I'm going in and I'm going to work the stem just a little bit. I'm not going to get it completely perfect before moving on to the red, um, before moving on to the red pepper but that is my process i don't allow one section to become perfect first at, at least um not by design um sometimes it may just work out that way but i know that i have to go back to this yellow pepper but i still want to start adding some color to the red pepper to see how i need to start developing it before moving on to the green pepper so i would suggest that you do the same thing that's one of the things that i normally do um i kind of let everything develop um together of course you have to you can't just be all over the place at one time but start trying to develop um everything all together and then once you take a step back and you look at your painting you can see how everything is coming together All right, so I was going a little slow only because I'm kind of studying what I'm viewing, but then also looking at um, what I'm doing on my, my painting. And because it kind of started looking like my red that I was using was blending in a little bit too much with the surface, I went in with a parchment type of color. It's like this off white um, color, like a grayish white. So I'm adding that to this flat or this portrait pink. That way, um, my red pepper does not blend in too much with the surface that is sitting on. And now I'll go back. Um, 
I'll go back to the red pepper and then kind of defining where I think that um, stem should be located on this pepper. All right, so if you're just starting out, the angle of these peppers can be quite tricky, but it's not impossible. All it takes is practice. So if you would like to paint on uh, these peppers, make sure that you take a photo that will be in a position that's kind of easy for you to draw. And if you would like to place them in the same position that I did, by all means, go for it. Now, if you are not that confident in how it's going to turn out prior to you starting your painting, I suggest um, try to sketch it with um, using either a writing pencil or a uh, drawing pencil and a piece of paper and then see what results you get prior to you painting. If you like the results and you think that you can draw that with your painting brush, then by all means, now you can go ahead and start your painting and you can kind of do the same method that I use where I just start with a general um, sketch of the subject matter with a titanium white or some light color because usually my background is going to be um, like a very light yellow or some some other color. All right, so I'm further developing this red pepper. Um, at first, I, I went in with a very dark red that was called Crimson. And I got that from the Artist Loft collection that I have, and I've had it for a very long time. So if you do not have the same Crimson color, which is very dark, um, I would suggest you can take whatever red that you do have, and you can mix a little bit of black to it until you get the desired color that you're trying to achieve. And and um, once again, now I'm going back and uh, kind of defining the, that shaded color or the shaded area of this uh, red pepper. All right, so I'm adding that white because I feel like um, this portion is going to be a little bit lighter um, where I had some of that dark red and I lightened it up really light because um, that would just help me when I get ready to go back with a medium red color. Um, I don't have to work as hard or put as many layers on it. So that's why I lightened it up as light as I did. All right, so most of the, the pepper is now painted in um, most of the color that I'm going to lay down, but eventually I'm going to come back and further develop some of the details in that. But I will move on to the green pepper and start um, slowly trying to make sure that I define all the shapes that I'm going to have within that pepper. All right, so now I'm going in and um, the portion of this green pepper that is kind of hiding behind the yellow pepper and the red pepper, that's going to be the area that is most shaded. So that area is going to be on um, the darkest color of the green pepper. All right, so now I'm kind of developing that um, that green stem that's going to be in the middle of this green pepper and 
kind of just making sure that I have it very defined before moving on to any other area because I want to make sure I don't forget. And as you see, um, I make mistakes too. So I kind of just uh, went over it with uh, green paint because it wasn't developing as well as I thought it should have. And that's what you can do as well. Um, instead of erasing um, using you know water and a paper towel you can always just kind of wipe it out with the paint that you're using but um, I'll eventually come back and kind of work that area to make sure that I don't forget All right, so now I'm going back to the green pepper, trying to make sure that I get this green stem in there, just like a general area of where I'm going to um, place it. Um, but then I'm going to move on from the stem and start working on that background. Because if you notice, the, the um, peppers are almost kind of blending in with the background. So that's why I say you can develop your whole picture as you go. You don't have to get too um, stuck on developing one part of your um, painting at once you want to kind of work all of them together and um, it will help kind of define things so you can see just by me lightening up that background around the um, the yellow and the green pepper is kind of helping me to see what I'm working with um, because it's very difficult over there on the right side of this green pepper to see um, the distinction between my pepper and the background All right, so now I'm lightening up um, some of the area of that yellow pepper and kind of making way for some of those details to start coming in. And then now I'm working the red pepper. So once again, you don't see where I'm getting too over consumed with just one thing at one time. I'm allowing all of them to sort of develop at the same time. All right, so the portion of the green pepper that's hiding behind the yellow and the red pepper, uh, I'm going in kind of defining where that shade is. And as you see, I'm kind of doing some clean up on this red pepper as well. And then I'm kind of cleaning up the air, the portion of where um, that yellow pepper is also. And so now you can see I'm kind of developing the stem a little bit more. And then kind of working the outer portion of the green pepper. And then now I'm making sure that, you know, it's still a little bit darker of where that uh, hidden portion of that green pepper is and now you can start to see now that i've lightened up the right side of that pepper there is starting to be a clear distinction between the pepper and its background all right so to further um distinguish the green pepper and the red pepper from the background i'm kind of lightening on um, that background up just a tad bit i'm not making it too light but i need to still see a clear distinction between my subject and the background and if you notice um, i didn't stay there too long i didn't get too crazy with 
um, you know, making sure that I, I developed the background that much. Um, but I wanted to at least make that clear distinction. And now I move back to the pepper and kind of starting to add where those light portions of the green pepper is going to be. And um, that's the same thing that you have to do. You just have to kind of just work it um, the way you see fit. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't skip too many steps ahead, but make sure you have those darker portions and then go to your medium um, portions of your subject and then on to the lightest color. So if you notice, I did not add that lightest color of my green pepper until I clearly knew where those darker portions were going to be. Now, it might work out for you if you don't work it in the same order, but that's just my process. All right, and now I moved on to the yellow pepper. Once again, I want to not make sure that it, that one gets done before the other. I want them to all kind of develop as I go. And I'm working this middle area of this stem. It's not exactly the way I want it to be yet. So now you see I'm going in with um, a yellow color and kind of cleaning up some of that. If you notice, I started out in that green area is just a little bit too fat. It shouldn't be that fat. Um, so I'm just using my paint, um, my yellow paint to clean up some of that area to make it smaller. So you don't always have to erase. It's not like we are, you know, sketching. Um, you can actually use your paint to your, your advantage. And so now what I'm doing is going back over it and cleaning it up with some white simply because um, the yellow was almost kind of blending in with that green and it wasn't making um, that area as the fine as I wanted it to be. All right, so now that middle portion is starting to get a little bit closer to what I want it to look like. Um, and now I'm just going throughout the um, yellow pepper and kind of uh, adding some of those details in. And now you see I'm kind of lightening up that middle that middle portion of it. I haven't touched the outer portion just yet, but I will develop that as I go. All right, so now I'm going back into the middle where this stem is and I'm kind of adding the details of where this stem is going to be. And if you notice, I did not make a complete circle. I kind of made like an off circle because I'm trying to make sure that um, it appears in a 
3D sort of a look because uh, even though it is facing towards me, um, it's still not flat. Okay, so now I'm just working the rest of those, um, the stem section of the bell peppers. And I like the way this yellow pepper is kind of turning out. And so I'm kind of adding a little bit of depth to um, where that um, stem is kind of sunken in. All right, so now I'm going in and kind of um, making that, making the, the shaded portion of the yellow pepper a little less harsh. Okay, so I'm kind of blending that out a little bit more. All right, so now um, I'm starting to add the where the light portions of where the light is hitting the the yellow pepper and adding like this little light reflection, and um, now I'm kind of just still defining where you know those folds and the humps of the bell peppers are. Uh, I'm just going in, kind of working that area, kind of blending it out, making it more, making those um, humps a little bit more defined. All right, and now I'm working the middle portion of this uh, yellow pepper once again, kind of just making sure that it's clearly defined and those details are in to make it look real. All right, so now I'm going uh, in and working on that green pepper and I'm adding details to the middle of where that stem is and bringing that one to life a little bit more. And then now I'm working on the stem for the red one, bringing that one to life. And I think I like the way that this is developing. Again, it may not be exact to the picture, but um, as long as you understand what's going on and I have most of the details accurate, then, you know, I think it, it makes a good painting.
All right, so now I'm um, going back to that red pepper, adding a little bit more shade. And once again, that that dark um, color is not completely black. It's just very dark. And that's what I mean by if you use black, is it will overpower um, your color that you're trying to um, darken. But again, uh, you can always fix it. And now you see I'm doing a little bit of cleanup on this red apple and giving a little bit more um, shape to the green apple that's hiding behind it. So now the, the green pepper stands out a little bit more uh, from the red pepper. And now I'm going to the background, making sure that I um, clean up some of that red that that where I originally had the pepper I'm cleaning that up and just kind of still trying to define this pepper and as you notice you you can clearly see like where some of the the dark shades of this red pepper some of the medium shades and um where I'm going to start adding the lightest portions are around like the top of that hump and um, closer towards the front of that red pepper because that's where that light is shining and hitting it okay so basically I'm just smoothing out those harsh lines on that red pepper and now I'm going back into the green pepper kind of defining um, some of where that green is and making those um, light portions of the green pepper of the ref the light reflection not as big it's supposed to be um, just just big enough for you to know that there's a light reflection but not too much so I'm just kind of cleaning up those those light areas All right, so for the most part, I've been using my round brush and um, now I've gone to a very small round brush and now I'm kind of defining where that light reflection is on the green pepper. All right, so now I'm going into the red pepper and adding some of the light reflections there. And I'm pay making sure that I pay close attention to my photo and where those reflections are. Um, there, there are sometimes if you try to do it from memory and you're not paying attention to your photo if you have one, you can start adding things to your photo that may not make sense. Um, according to, um, you know, let's just say your light source and, uh, I've done it in the past and you learn as you go, we're all, we're all going to make mistakes, uh, along our journey, but I'm making sure right now that I'm paying attention to where those light reflections are on the photo. And now I'm going on the surface and I'm kind of brightening up on um, that surface a little bit and kind of clearly defining um, the subject matter from the surface that it's sitting on.
All right, so now I'm going back into the background, not because I did not like the background, but if you notice, um, I'm actually cleaning up the edge of this yellow pepper. And that is something that you're just going to have to um, do as you observe your painting. The areas where you feel like you need clean up to you, um, that's where you're going to go in and start making adjustments to um, develop your painting a little bit more. But that's basically what I did. I didn't have to mess with that background at all, but I wanted to make sure that I cleaned up the edge of this yellow pepper. All right, so now you see where I've gone back to the yellow pepper and kind of blend out the harsh shadow line and um, hoping that that will kind of make things a little bit softer, uh, giving it more of an appearance of a shade and not just a dark, harsh line. All right, so now I'm going into the background for the very last time, just kind of cleaning it up and making sure that I don't have any harsh lines uh, from when I was cleaning up and distinguishing the peppers from the background. So that's basically all I'm doing. And then if you notice on the right hand side, the background does not need to be as dark on the right hand side, simply because the red pepper is already somewhat darker. So um, I'm going to lighten that up just a tad bit. All right, now I like the color of this background, especially on the right side. It's not as dark and it's allowing the peppers to pop a little bit more. So now what I'm doing is going in and adding the shadows for these peppers. I will finish by adding a very dark line um, next to where the peppers start on that table because that's going to be your darkest part of your shadow is where it meets the surface of the table all right so i'm going to continue to add the finishing touches to this painting and i hope that um, this painting tutorial was helpful in uh, allowing you to see how i developed my painting so um, if you all have any questions please feel free to um, email me or message me until next time See you all later.
all right so i hope that you all enjoyed that um painting tutorial a little bit more than the ones where i'm just painting and um i'm not talking and the music is just playing but hopefully i was able to guide you through of what i was doing throughout that painting so that you can now follow along with me or you can take some of those same techniques and apply it to your own painting but until next time i'll see you guys later bye